from Sandy's Camera and Cinema Works. This is Benjamin. Normally I'd be talking to you from our beautiful Hollywood showroom here in Los Angeles, but right now I'm actually in my home office doing an exciting product release with the Canon Cinema team. Um, during this, uh, this time of social distancing and isolation and everything being shut down, we've decided to go to Skype because we have two exciting new products, the C300 Mark III and the Canon Cine Servo 25-250 to let all of our filmmakers know about today. Hey, welcome guys. Hey, how's it Hi. going? Doing great. <clears throat> so we as filmmakers here in Los Angeles, we know the C300 line. We love it. We've all used it on productions. It's an incredibly good camera and incredibly versatile. To see that camera improved upon from Canon is completely exciting. Can we talk a little bit about what's new on the camera as far as its form factor and compatibility? Absolutely, and I just, I'm so excited to get my hands on it. So here it is right here, the C300 Mark III. Um, as you're looking at it, you can probably tell if you know the C500 Mark II, well, it looks very similar. It's because it's exactly the same body, exactly the same body as the C500 Mark II. Uh, this is really interesting because this opens up a lot of inter interchangeability options between that camera and this one. Now, all of your C500 Mark II accessories, your expansion units, your interchangeable lens mounts, they're all gonna work on this exactly the same way as they work on the C500 Mark II. So that's really great for owner operators and rental houses and you know, pretty much anybody who wants to play with both of these cameras, especially at the same time. Um, one important thing to note is that they are the exact same weight at 3.9 pounds. And more importantly, the balance is the same. So that means if you have a steady cam or a jib or a gimbal all rigged up for a C500 Mark II, this is going to slide right onto there exactly the same. Makes it very, very quick and easy. Excellent. So we have a brand new Super 35 sensor with this brand new dual gain output technology. Can you talk further to us about that? Yeah, so we're, we're really excited about this new sensor. It's, the, it's a 4K Super 35 millimeter dual gain output sensor. All right, and what's dual gain output? Well, it allows us to push the dynamic range into over 16 stops of total dynamic range. Uh, this is a first for us. Um, the C500 Mark II, and before that, we were hitting about 15 stops of total dynamic range. And so we're really kind of pushing it with this one. It's exciting. Um, and this is done in kind of an ingenious way. The Canon engineers realized that they could take the uh, existing technology that was in the Canon sensors, the ones that they use for dual pixel autofocus, and apply it to using different gain levels. So let me just backtrack real fast. Each pixel in our sensors is split into two diodes. They apply a lower gain and lower noise to one diode. They apply higher gain and proper saturation to another diode. They combine those two together and they get an image that covers the full dynamic range of over 16 stops. Wow. So that, that's a little bit different than some of the video systems that say dual gain or dual ISO. There's not a second native ISO on the camera. You're actually changing pixel to pixel the gain and recording on the sensor. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. That's a good way to put it. Um, there's no, yeah, there's no native, no dual ISOs. It's a totally, actually, different concept entirely. Cool. Um, exciting new technology from Canon. Uh, let's talk about, yeah. I think, one of the most exciting things in the new camera release, uh, the different frame rate modes, especially high frame rate. That's something a lot of people mm -hmm. have been interested in seeing added to the C300 Mark II line. Yeah. Um, let's talk about those. Yeah, absolutely. So off the bat, so the camera will shoot 4K in RAW and XFAVC up to 120 frames a second. And that's in the Super 35 millimeter mode. That's the, the full size of the sensor. Um, if you go into the Super 16 crop mode, which is going to give you 2K RAW and 2K in XFAVC, then you're going to go up to 180 frames a second. Wow, 180 frames per second is an incredible mm -hmm. frame rate, especially from a Canon cinema camera. Uh, I know here in LA, we saw a lot of the Canon C300s with people doing you know, music videos, things mm -hmm. like that. The sort of overcranked high frame rate look right. is really, really popular right now. Yeah. So it's really exciting to see that added to the C300 lineup. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I think what I'm seeing right now from the camera is just increased versatility. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the adaptation of different lens mounts. A lot of our filmmakers here in Hollywood like to come to Sammy Cinema Works, we have an entire legacy cinema lens collection. Mm -hmm. Now you don't have to make that decision, do I want EF or PL mount right. when I buy the camera? I can get the camera and whatever I'm gonna shoot with most, add that second mount as an accessory, 
And job for job, I can make the best decision about what type of lens I want to use for it. Come into a place like Sammy Cinema Works, go to our prep bay, try out different PL lenses, even anamorphic lenses. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to me about anamorphic compatibility? It sounds like we added something there as well. We did. We added uh, support for D-Squeeze in it. So like the C500 Mark II, that carried over to C300 line. Um, now, again, one of the things that's interesting is using anamorphic lenses on a Super 35 sensor, right? Um, the full frame sensors are great for that because they cover the full image circle of a two times anamorphic lens. When you're using a two times anamorphic lens on Super 35, you're getting a little bit of crop out of it. But people still want to have the, the embedded characteristics of the anamorphic. You still get those characteristics, even if you are cropping a little bit. So the camera itself has um, de-squeeze modes for two times and 1.3 times lenses. Now, 1.3 times anamorphic lenses were made for the 16 by 9 Super 35 size. Um, but they're pretty rare. I'm not sure many people who actually have a set of 1.3 times mm -hmm. anamorphic lenses. Um, that notwithstanding, though, two times anamorphic still work brilliantly on uh, the Super 35 sensor that we have. So. Yeah. Excellent. So another thing we're looking at on the camera, uh, proxy recording built into the camera. So for some faster editing workflows in 4K, looks like we've had that. What's the file format for the proxy that we're adopting on the C300 Mark III? It is a XFAVC, so it's a .mxf. Okay. Great. Uh, yeah, so it's nice. It's a, it's a nice file. It's a, it's a 2K, uh, 35 megabit per second. So it's 8-bit 420, but it gets a proxy. So it's going to play in any editing system. You're not going to be chugging along with any of those things. And that's what proxies are made to do. Um, right. But it will work in, it will work for proxies for RAW, proxies for XFABC, and at any frame rate. Mm -hmm. you know, in previous generations of the C300, we've almost always paired the camera with some type of external recorder to open up uh, different RAW recording capabilities, things like that. Um, any, any need for that type of technology here with the C300 Mark III? I see we're doing RAW light internal Right. to the CF Express, that's exciting. Yeah, so I think because we moved the, the raw internally now, um, they dedicated the outputs to be more for monitor or for alternative codec reasons. So the camera itself has, it has a 3G SDI output and a, an HDMI output. And the HDMI output will give you 4K up to 60p at 10-bit 422. Um, and then the... 3G SDI is going to give you 2K, great for an AC, great for an onboard monitor, um, or just a, a regular field monitor. Uh, on top of that, there's actually a 12G SDI output as well. And that's the interesting one. So the 12G SDI output is going to give you that 4K 10-bit 422 output through one SDI cable. Uh, typically, to get up to 60 frames a second in 4K, you need to have three or four uh, 3G SDI cables. But with 12G, that lets us do it through one cable. That means you need to have a 12G monitor on the other side of it. Um, so that's really what that is. And that's not a raw output, though. So it's not outputting raw. But if you did want to shoot in ProRes um, or something like that, then that would be a good option for you. Awesome. So I do see that we have compatibility with custom user LUTs. How, how are we routing that? Can I assign different lookup tables to different outputs on the camera, or is it just one for the entire recording? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we have a built in, we have a set number of LUTs kind of just based off of broadcast specs. You have Rec 709, 2020, uh, DCIP3 is in there, I believe, as a LUT. Um, and then, you know, and then HDR as well. But for user LUTs, you can create your own LUT. You can go into DaVinci Resolve. And actually, right now, it has to be DaVinci Resolve. And you can make a cube LUT. And you output that cube LUT, and then you use an SD card to upload it to the camera. And there's four slots of memory in the camera where you can put these LUTs. Uh, and then you can assign it to what terminal you need to. So we have the, like the Canon um, proprietary terminal that we use for the LCD screen or like the EVFB70 viewfinder from the C700. Uh, you can use it on that terminal. Um, you can have it only on that, or you can have it go out the, mon the 3G SDI or the 12G SDI uh, or the HDMI. So yeah, there's a lot of versatility in where we can have the LUTs come out. Um, 
I, yeah. I think the word versatility is so key with the Canon C300 series in general. And it looks like on this sort of next iteration of the C300 series, mm -hmm. you guys have added even more custom configuration, allowing you to kind of slot the camera into different types of production. I know one of my favorite things about the Canon Cinema series with the C300 line has always been the ability to dress the camera down to be bare bones with a small autofocus lens that you can handhold and operate for documentary or run and gun shooting. Or now, what I see with this camera, we can put cinema PL zooms, we can have different LUTs on the different outputs of the camera and it can go into a much larger cinematic production with every accoutrement you wanna to add to the camera. It's really, really cool. Um, I know you kind of touched on it with the new ISO architecture of the camera, but that dual pixel autofocus, are we seeing that same type of system that we know and love from the C200 and other cameras in the Canon Cinema line? With yeah. Or autofocus? I Oh, absolutely. And it's actually, you know, it just gets better and better with each iteration. Um, and this takes a lot more from the C500 Mark II than anything. You can see there's a lot of shared DNA between the two cameras. Um, on the C500 Mark II and now on this camera, we did a little some fine tuning to the autofocus. Uh, very, very slight. We kind of made the ramping a little bit more organic, I, I guess you could say. Um, instead of more of like the boop, 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 you know, there's a little bit of a, the, or as you would like, you know, take a look at a, an AC pulling focus, there's a, there's a ramp at the beginning and a ramp at the end. And so, um, it's subtle, but it's in there and it makes things like a little bit more, especially, you know, a little bit more professional, especially when you combine it with the, what the versatility you already had, where you can change the speed of the ramps and the sensitivity of the autofocus and the face tracking as well. It's all in there. Um, the one big thing about this camera, though, that none of our Cinema EOS cameras have been able to do with autofocus is that uh, this one can record in some, some more frame rates. So this one can do 24, 30, 48, 60, and 120 with autofocus. Um, and that was something that we haven't been able to do with any of the other Cinema EOS cameras. Wow, that's great. Well, you know, all of those features, they're there if you want them. I mean, many of our customers swear by manual focus exclusively, but I think what Canon's doing here is they're giving you more and more options that are more and more worth professional consideration. And during this time of kind of social distancing and isolation, I think you're gonna see people return to production with smaller crews and more options like this are gonna be even better for us as we, as we start looking at that. Um, well, that, that's an incredibly exciting release from Canon. Uh, I, I can't wait to get this camera into the hands of some of our content creators here in Los Angeles. What are we looking at for the, uh, the release date and the price on the camera? Yeah, so release date, I get to tell you that it's coming out this year. Excellent. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, seriously though, uh, later this year, we're gonna see this camera come out. And price-wise, we're looking at $10,999. Okay, remarkable release price. I know the Canon C300 Mark II was considerably more expensive. That's right. We're now in the year 2020 and you're bringing out an even greater feature set at an even lower price. That's great news for us. So the uh, to pivot to our second release today, we have a Canon Cinema Servo Zoom, uh, 25 to 250 coming out as well today. Um, I think we've got the lens sort of in our video chat here. So we'll switch over there to hear about some of the feature sets on this new exciting lens. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, so hi, Benjamin. Uh, like you said, we've got an incredible announcement as far as the cinema lens today. This is the 25 to 250 Cine Servo. Um, when we were talking about the camera, we were talking how versatile it is. I mean, this goes right along with it. This is gonna be such a versatile uh, addition to our lens lineup. Um, fits really nicely in between our existing Cine servos, the 17 to 120 and the 50 to 1000, uh, with that you know extended zoom range, um, great sensitivity, um, and another thing that's just great about it is is how similar in size and weight it is to our existing 17 to 120. Um, for this amount of range, you're getting just a little bit longer uh, at 11.1 inches and at uh, 6.7 pounds versus like 6.3 on the 17 to 120. Um, so there's a lot of, lot of uh, opportunities to use these in combination crossover wise as well. Excellent. So I think the big exciting feature for me on this lens personally 
Um, I see you've chosen to call it a telephoto extender 1.5. I think it should have been called a full frame converter. <laughs> but I, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a really, really cool feature on the lens. Can you talk about that a little? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So the 1.5X extender is something that's pretty rare on a cinema lens. And um, it's great to have it on here uh, to extend the already great range of 25 to 250. Uh, located right on the back with the flick of a switch, it engages. And that'll take your focal length to um, a 37.5 to 375 on Super 35. Uh, but like you said, when you do engage that extender, just due to the nature of the optics, it uh, actually magnifies the image circle to cover a full frame. So that's extremely exciting right now uh, with the emergence of all these uh, new uh, full frame cinema cameras, RC500 Mark II, C700 full frame. Uh, it's, it's a great thing to have. Just with the flick of a switch, you've got a full frame zoom. Right. I mean, a lot of the uh, lens manufacturers that we're dealing with right now, they have this sort of full format converter where we can go to large format sensors, but it's a big process. We actually have to disassemble the lens, maybe look at reshimming it, and you know, adding a bunch of different screws to the back of it, something you really wanna be not in the field or in the back of a car doing, <laughs> certainly not during the middle of a shoot. Um, but now, if I saw that correctly, that was just the flip of a switch on the back of the lens to convert that's from it. one to the other. That, that's incredible. Yeah, Can you talk yeah. to me about you know, variable iris on this at, through the zoom range? Sure. Talk to me sure. about sort of the ramping on that and, and how it changes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the sensitivity is again just like the 17 uh, to 120. It's a it's a 2.95 uh, to 3.95, and yeah, that ramp does occur in there because you know we have to you know keep the the lens as small and portable as possible. Um, so the nice thing about it is it only starts ramping past 187 millimeters. So you're getting a, basically a seven to one zoom range out of it flat when it's wide open uh, with with no ramping at all. Um, when you're talking about going into the extender, that does drop the, the sensitivity by a stop. Um, so at that point, you're looking at a, a, a T4.4 to 5.9, and that's going to ramp past a 281. So again, you have a lot of range before you get into that, that uh, ramping. Excellent. Well, I think that's an incredibly exciting form factor for a lens that has that much range. It's like having two lenses in one with that large format compatibility for the owner and operator. And, you know, we've always said this before, we think of Canon servo zooms as not a zoom lens, but a collection of prime lenses in one lens. A as variable far as prime. Quality. So what are we looking at for the, uh, the release date and the price? Yeah, the lens will be available later this year for the price of $29,999. Well, that's two very exciting releases from the Canon Cinema team. I know we can't wait to get back to our store in Los Angeles where we can feature, do touch and try events, bring in our customers, invite them to rent and even purchase these products. And during this time where all of our customers are locked down, I know a lot of our image makers are in a stage of ideating new projects, new productions and things they wanna work on. And these are two really exciting tools to bring to our productions later this year. Thanks so much guys for your time today. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, on behalf of Sammy Cinema Works and Sammy's camera, thank you.